I'm an engineer by training, and three and a half years ago, I decided I wanted to combine my engineering skills with my patient experiences and do, some, do something to improve things for myself and others with chronic diseases. I found and started studying at a master's program in health informatics at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, and now I'm a doctoral student at the, same, at the, at the Karolinska, and I, my research focuses on self-care and chronic disease. When I was 13 years old, I was in a village hall of a remote village in, in the north of Sweden. It was an October evening in 1984. And I was listening together with the 50 of the villagers to relatives of mine performing, playing the accordion and violin and singing Swedish folk songs. Everybody in the room were clapping their hands and stomping their feet in rhythm with the music. I wanted to do the same. And the clapping was fine. But when I tried to, to tap my feet in rhythm with the music, I found that I couldn't do it. It was as if the signals couldn't go from my brain to my foot. It would take almost 20 years until I knew that what I was experiencing that evening were my first symptoms of Parkinson's disease, or, as the, or the shaking palsy, as James Parkinson described it in his essay from 1817. One of the fascinating things with this strange and fascinating disease is that not everybody with Parkinson's have the tremors that, that he gave him the, the, the title for his essay. 25% of patients do not present with a typical tremor. I'm one of them. So, tremor is one of the four cardinal symptoms. And the other ones are bradykinesia, which means slowness of movement, rigidity, which means stiffness, and then problems with posture and gait. And Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease that results in reduced amounts of the, of the neurotransmitted dopamine in the, in the brain. In most cases, the, the reason for this reduction of dopamine is unknown, and there currently is no cure. Dopamine is used for a number of things, for, among others, attention, working memory, and, and uh, voluntary movement. Dopamine is used... No, sorry, that was... And, and, and we, when we're diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, the symptoms are used. However, it's the non-motor symptoms, where you can see a few of them here, most troublesome patients. And there are, in fact, a number of articles, scientific articles, written on how the, the symptoms that physicians find most, most, that they want to help us with, are not the ones that patients find, find most troublesome. And to add things, to make things even more interesting, we have a number of interesting effects from the medications we take. And as we could see earlier, as Raj showed earlier, I see my neurologist once or twice a year, about one hour every, every well, half an hour every time. Whereas the, the rest of the year is 8,765 hours. And I, this is the 2013 version where I added the magnifying glass to make this circle visible. The, the 8,765 hours I spend in self-care, but of course, the, orange, the one hour I spend in healthcare is important for the way I can self-manage the rest of the year. And nevertheless, it's only during the one orange hour that I'm actually directly exposed to clinical guidelines and medical practice. Only in the one hour that, I'm, I, I, that, that healthcare is learning and, and improvement cycles meet my experiences and, and observations. But it's in the blue hours, in, in, in the self-care space, that the practices, that the treatments are put in practice by me. And it's only in the blue hours in the self-care that I can, I, I myself can observe the treatment's effects, as Michael just demonstrated as well. And I wonder what might happen if we had a way of, of collecting the most important information from the blue hours to bring to our meeting with healthcare in the orange hours. So the gold standard treatment for Parkinson's disease is medications. And as you can see in the film earlier, I take a lot of them. I take six different kinds of prescription medications, six times a day, in six different combinations, with six different time intervals. And this is, of course, a very complex regimen. And it took me more than one hour with my neural list to figure this one out. But I'm very happy that I have them, because without these medications, I wouldn't be standing here today. I wouldn't be able to walk, I wouldn't be able to travel, I would probably not be able to work, and it's very likely that I wouldn't be able to take care of myself. So they're good to have, but as the curious engineer I am, 
I wanted to know what effects these medications have on me. So I was inspired by a doctor's thesis that I saw on, on uh, um, using a finger tapping test to evaluate the effects of advanced Parkinson's treatment on patients in healthcare. And I figured I could use that in the self-care space. So I found an, uh, an app, an app that was used for, for competing against your friends on my iPhone and started tapping away. And it gave me some really interesting results, so I figured this could be good for other people with Parkinson's to use as well. So I, I was able to find funding and start a project in it, and in this project we developed two apps. One app for medication schedules and reminders, and the other app is for finger tapping tests. And the finger tapping test means that you, I use my middle finger, my right, right and left hand, and I tap as fast as I can for 30 seconds. And the higher the score, the more, the more of, of mobility the medications give me. So these, these two are connected to the same backend, so we can see the results here from a few days of my own measurements. The bars are, are indicates where, when I took my medication. The different colors indicate different medications. And the lines, the orange line with the, with the marks, the, 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 every, every square or circle on that indicates a completed tapping test of 30 seconds. The orange is my left hand, the blue is my right hand. And as you can see, there, are, there, there is a pattern to this. Every medication intake leads to an increase in function, which then is, is counteracted by a decrease, and then the next medication increases my function again. So the higher the score, the, be the better medication works for me. So, but then again, there's more to life than finger tapping. <laughs> so so I, I figured that I needed something more. And as you can see earlier, Parkinson's is a kind of complex disease with a lot of symptoms and side effects. So I needed to find something else to, to, to I wanted to measure more things. So I looked around to see what was out there. There are a lot of things, and of course I'm, I'm wearing the three that I use currently. The Yobon Up, the With Me, and the the Misfit Shine. And the Yobon and the Misfit Shine are both activity trackers, whereas With Me actually measures my heart rate variability. I'm going to talk a bit about the activity trackers. Oh, back then. The Oops button. <laughs> so the activity trackers. I've been using the Yobon app for a few months and the Shine for a few weeks, and both of them are, are good at tracking my activity and my sleep. I mainly use them for my sleep because that's a real issue in Parkinson's disease. But I found that they also actually make me more active just by wearing them. I, I find that I, I, I'm, I'm sort of aware of that I, I need to move every day, so it's, it's a good thing. But so, and I realized that I don't think you really use the, need to use the customized products and sensors for tracking even very complex conditions. You, you can use just regular consumer products to, to, and combine them. But to be able to combine them, it helps if you can have access to your data so you can combine them in the way you want with other things you measure. And there are a lot of sensors available out there. We know this. And, and to my mind, we only see the beginning of a knowledge revolution facilitated by this technological development. We can all have access to the same knowledge as the doctors do if we want to. And having a chronic disease it means lifelong learning for us with them. And to my mind, one of healthcare's last remaining challenges is to go from the way Michael just described randomized clinical trials uh, uh, as well, that to go from population-based clinical guidelines to individual health. And from, from my perspective and from my experience, currently healthcare is very seldom part of that translation from guidelines to individual health. Thank you.